it is very pleasant to be talking to you about penny stocks. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Tuesday. It is March 5th. And that's what we do here. We talk about a hot penny stock. I'm a day trader and that's all I really trade outside of options. I trade stocks under five bucks and you can find those on every market. And of course, I'm looking for stocks that have potential to make us money, hot penny stocks. Now you can find heat in a lot of different places. You can take the time, put in the effort, go through the press releases and the filings. There's lots of heat there. You can also go over to the charts, which is where I like to spend my time. You can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time and pretty much at a glance, you can tell if there's heat in the chart. You can see volume coming in. You can see the price turning, doing a breakout. You can see it going to the moon. Well, if you can match the two together, a hot piece of news and a hot chart, ha ha ha, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the kind of stocks I like to bring to your attention. Well, I've got one for you right now. This is ticker BBAI, Big Bear AI Holdings. You know what sector she's in? <laughs> yes, the AI sector. We looked at an AI company yesterday, Toner, Tickle, Tickle, T-O-N-R, and we're looking at another one now, and I wouldn't be surprised if we look at another one tomorrow. We're going to be looking at a lot of AI companies, not just because they're popping up like dandelions, but because they evolve so fast. They're getting into every industry, every sector. The world is going AI. So don't be surprised if most of what we look at in the next year are AI companies. Now, BBAI, her chart, it's hot, but not. She's been running most of February and March. She hit a high of $5 starting at 2 That was a nice run. Well, today she took a drop. Finally, whew, she was starting to look like a rocket stock. She dropped today from $5 down to $3.70, which is a buying opportunity. These AI companies are growing, folks. Yes, you're going to see some pops and drops, but for the most part, they're dropping and popping again and continuing on. And the way AI grows and evolves, we're going to have catalyst after catalyst coming very quickly, unlike a lot of the companies that we've been investing in over the last uh, forever. So BBAI is looking like she's at a buying opportunity, not only because she fell, but she's bouncing off of a strong SMA on her four-hour chart. That's what caught my attention. Well, coming over here, going through her filings and her press releases, I discovered she's in the midst of a big acquisition right now of another AI company. It is looking hot, folks. BBAI did finish today at $3.70 with almost 15% drop, and she is on the New York Stock Exchange. That comes with benefits. Penny stocks on the OTC, as a matter of fact, any stock on the OTC, you normally have to pay to buy in and you got to pay to get out. On the major exchange, it's all free. You can buy one share, you can buy a thousand shares, it won't cost you anything. Plus, you get to trade pre-market, after-market. You never get to do that on the OTC, and there are some serious gains to be gotten pre-market and after-market. And if you think about it, folks, there's just a lot more volume and money up on the major exchanges. So personally, I like trading these penny stocks on the major exchange. And that's not even mentioning all the extra oversight that you get up on the major exchange that we don't get on the OTC. In other words, there's not as much BS up on the major exchange as there is on the OTC. So what does BBAI do specifically? Well, to figure that out, all we gotta do is jump on over here to the company's website, bigbear.ai. Now, it's not a bad website. They've got a lot of good information around here, but of course, we don't have time to go through it all. But I do wanna share with you what this company is doing. Because unlike a lot of AI companies, they've got more than just one product focused in on one industry. They have a lot of different services and products. Their primary one is working with security, working with biometrics and facial recognition and things like that. They're working with private companies, public companies, and the U.S. government. And they've already got contracts established with the government. We see here in the news, they were awarded a $17.9 million contract with the U.S. Army. I do believe they're also working with the Navy now. And this is great, folks. You start working with the government, you know you're not going to have any problems with money. The government's got deep pockets, no matter how broke they are. And normally, if you can get in with them, you're in with them for a real long time. But this company's doing a lot more than just that. 
They're also shaping smart cities, helping control traffic flow and stuff like that. They're working with uh, shipping and logistics, manufacturing and warehouse operations, which sounds real boring, but it's critical, folks. That is our supply chain. You break the supply chain of a nation, you break the nation. So that is a critical sector for AI to be working in. But the one that has me most excited is that they're working in the medical sector. They're going to be helping these research and development companies create better drugs, maybe miracle drugs. So I'm excited about that aspect. They tell us here that their solutions will empower leaders to streamline operations and make more informed decisions. That's the difference between AI and a computer. A computer just shows you information. It doesn't give you options. AI is going to be helping us. They're going to help us to control manufacturer production flows, help us with our supply chains, logistic optimizations, clinical drug trials, identification, analysis of system vulnerabilities, <laughs> and force readiness and the deployment of our military, of course. As you can see, they are already doing a lot, and I expect they're going to end up doing a lot more as well. So what was the relative volume around this company today? We had a nice jump, doing about 400% increase, right? Four times 7.8 million is virtually 36.5 million. That's a nice jump. Share structure for BBAI. It's average. Our outstanding share count is at about 156 million. I don't know what the float is. They don't give us any idea here. It could be up to 156 million, but the float could be considerably less as well. Now, I used to have a thing about wanting to tell you the float on every single stock, and I used to go around looking for it. It's not as easy as you think, especially on the major exchange. You can find the OS, but good luck finding that float. Market cap for the company. Oh, they're pushing towards that $1 billion mark. Right now, they're at virtually $680 million. Financials for the company, you know, they don't give us anything here. Not the annuals, the quarterlies, or the balance sheet, but I know where to get some information. So I've jumped on over here to Yahoo. Let's focus in on this now. All right, we are on income. Let's go to the annual. We are there. All right, so we got two years here. Revenues for the company in 2021, remembering that we got to add three zeros to any of these numbers too. They did 145 million in 2021 and then added 10 million to that by 2022. The TTM, that stands for trailing 12 months. So from today, going back 12 months, they've done 148 million, which looks like they're actually decreasing in their revenues right now. Let's take a look at the quarterly, see if that's the case. Year ago, we were at 40 million, and the last quarter, September of 2023, we were at 33. We are dropping. So we can see a decrease in the revenues right now, which I don't think is going to hang around for long. And I do know we've got a quarterly report coming out here anytime, and we have the annual report. And I am expecting them to be bigger. Let's see if we can get a little bit of balance sheet over here. I don't normally come here, so I'm not familiar with their setup. Total assets. At the end of 12, 2022, that's over a year ago, we were at 195 million. Total liabilities were 233 million. So we are looking at about 38 million stockholder deficit at this point in the game. Disclosures for BBAI. All right, we do have some important disclosures over here. Three of them I specifically want to point out to you. The Form 4, the 13D, and the 8K. The Form 4, this is filed whenever insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. And we're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them because they can get them and lose them in a lot of different ways. Well, this is not a purchase or a sale, and it is a big number. BBAI Ultimate Holdings acquires 61 million shares at $1.34. Folks, you'd be talking about $75, $80 million worth of investment. But wait, we got the wrong code here. We need a P if they were purchasing them. We need an S if they were selling them. Now, I don't know what every letter stands for. But when I read down here, I see this is all tied into the news. 
just like this SC13D is. This is another form showing people who are buying into the company. Well, here's BBAI again. Well, there's a lot of them here. Let me scroll down to another one. Dun, 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 dun. There, Aero Equity. There's another one. And look at the numbers here. 75% interest in the company. 75% interest. What this is all about, folks, is there is an acquisition going on. Basically a merger, if you will, two companies coming together and there is a share exchange. A lot of shares are being exchanged. So that's what that is all about. Then we've got an 8K here. Turns out you've got a big investor that had a lot of warrants that he bought a while ago, about uh, 14 million of them, and he's cashing them in. Now, what that does is put a lot of money in his pocket because a warrant guarantees you the right to buy a share of the stock at a big discount sometime in the future. So he bought these warrants a while ago, and now he's cashing them in. Well, when you convert a warrant and cash it in, it gives birth to a new share of stock. So we have about 14 million new shares on the market now. That just increased our float, decreased our shareholder value which is deficit right now of about 38 million. But he did turn around and he gave it back to the company, all that money, and he bought more warrants. Not that that's helping me or you, but it is money back in the company's hands. Every time they sell warrants or cash in warrants, they make money. So they made a lot of money on that deal. So the company's got cash in their hands right now. All right, let's go take a look at that news now. I just opened up a lot of windows here. I got to find it. All right. I know I lost my highlight. That's okay because I remember the piece of news I needed to share with you. If it ever comes up. All right. It's not going to come up. You see how this treats me? I had a piece of news here to share with you. There were about seven pieces of news. One I wanted to share. I do have it. It is right here. Oh, and they took away all my highlights. All right. I'm going to read to you what I remember. Big Bear AI completes Pangium acquisition, establishes combined company as breakout leader in vision AI for national security, supply chain management, and digital ID. Today, Big Bear AI, a leading provider of AI-powered decision intelligence solutions, announced the completion of its acquisition of Pangenium Intermediate Holdings, a leader in vision AI for the global trade, travel, and digital identity industries. The combined entity will create one of the industry's most comprehensive vision AI portfolios, combining facial recognition, image-based anomaly detection, and advanced biometrics with Big Bear AI's computer vision and predictive analytics capabilities. Kevin McLean is going to become the new president of the company. This is the man that's taken over as president for BBAI. He is currently the chief executive officer for Pangium. This is Kevin McLean, and he comes with some good experience. He recently was serving as the acting secretary for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Well, if you're going to be working with two companies that both have contracts with the government, this is the man you want in office. Now, looking at their website, again, they've got a lot of good information over here, but we don't have time to go through it all. But I want you to focus in on what it is that they do. They do a lot of different things with their AI, but they primarily are working with security as well, with biometrics and facial recognition. So there are things that both of these companies, BBAI and Pangium, do separately and things they do the same. So they've got synergies. They're going to be able to increase their strengths, which means they're also going to be able to reduce their expenses. This is really looking good to me, folks. We got two strong AI companies here merging, both of them working with the government, both which can do a lot of different things, and they are both growing very quickly. And the chart, it's at a spot now that we need to consider entry. You ready to do some charting? I hope so. Charting is my favorite part of due diligence. So we are over here at Thinkorswim, my free trading platform, and we're going to take a look at Big Bear AI, ticker BBAI. So on our six-month, four-hour chart, we got a low of $1.16 in November, and it looks like yesterday, after market, we hit a high of 5 bucks. Now, as you can see, she was in a downtrend underneath that 200 for a long time until she hit this low bubble. 
then everything changed. Her trend changed. She bounced off of that low bubble, put herself on top of the 200 now. And for the most part, she's been on top of the 200 all this time. Now, she did dip a little bit right here underneath it, but she came right back down to this strong support, laid on it, bounced off it, put herself back on the 200. She had a nice bounce off the 200 here, February 26th, and she ran from $1.94 up to 5 bucks. Our volume has been growing this entire time. All of our SMAs have turned up and are starting to climb, except for today. She did climb on that nine day SMA all the way up to that high bubble. And today she fell and fell and fell. She came all the way down to the 20 day SMA, which she's been ignoring all of this time. She came through it, bounced back up and actually finished the day right on top of the 20 day SMA. And after market period, it looks like she's starting to climb again. Oscillators are very pathetic. <laughs> it was a day of falling, so all of our oscillators are in a depression right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, you can see where the climb started, right off of that low bubble of $1.57 when she was underneath all of the SMAs, but on top of that strong support. She came up on top of the 200, and she started her climb bouncing. And she got up to that high and fell down through her 50. And it looks like she is right on top of that 50 right now. This is looking nice. That's a better picture. Oscillators look like we have some sort of recovery going on right now. Everything is starting to level out. It hasn't started turning up yet, but it's all leveled out. It stopped falling. That's the first thing you got to do if you want to climb is stop falling. Looking at our five day, five minute. Little roly poly chart here. We're down here at $2.40. She was on top of the 200. She dipped underneath it, got on top of it, hit that high. She's dipped underneath it. And right now, looks like she's starting to come back up. You can see the price went up underneath all of the SMAs, came back on top of all the SMAs, and all of them are starting to turn right now. Our oscillators, whoo, what a mess. Let, let me zoom in on that. All right, so we do have our ADX going down. This is my trend continuation. When I see a pattern between my PPO, when it's going up, the blue line, and my ADX red line are going down, guaranteed 100% your stock is climbing in price. Now, it just started, but it tells me that is the direction it is working on right now. We can see our MACD is just about ready to do a crossover and start climbing, and our RSI has already started climbing. This is a big deal, folks. BBAI is merging with Pangeum. Both of them are working with security with the U.S. government. This is going to be hot, not just with the government, but with all people. Everybody wants security. And with AI and quantum computing, privacy is going to be a hard thing to keep right now. So security is going to be a major issue. But they do so much more than that. And now that the two companies are coming together, they're going to be a powerhouse. It is time to watch this company, folks. BBAI, it definitely deserves some more research. Look into Pangeum as well. They're going to be one company. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.